Welcome to the course. I'm excited about this course because we are tackling a application that's very different from the ones we've built in the past. Most applications like Airbnb, Uber, Tinder, they rely on a very complex user interface in the building of many components and the actual magic happening behind the scenes is not that great. But with Schedule Once, we have really the opposite. Um, if you've never used this booking calendar appointment uh, tool before, really it's pretty simple how it works if you are a user and it has a lot of complexity behind the scenes. So to show how this works, let's say I was going to a sample Schedule Once page here. I see that I'm booking the time on this person's calendar. I have their calendar pulled up here with some available times and really it's pretty simple. I click on the date. I then click on the time I'd like to schedule. Everything's taken care of as far as time zone, all that good stuff. I hit next and then really I set up a call with them or a meeting. So on the front end, it's relatively simple. But let's take a look at some of the back end components. What's going on that we cannot see here. Andrew's availability needs to be pulled in real time from a variety of calendars and then pulled into a system where it's able to sort through his preferences, whether he would like calls at 10.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. as he set up here, uh, what his time zone is, all that complex stuff to really get us down to what we see on the front end side of things. So what we need to do if we're going to build an application like this is we need to start by building a powerful API integration with a calendar service. We're going to need to bring that service to the forefront to be able to make modifications to it. And then we'll have to build in a actual calendar booking functionality to put and then place things on his calendar. Um, and again, a lot of what this course is going to be is building the meat components, the big underlying uh, API connections, the workflow events in bubble that then make the user experience side of things on the front end very, very straightforward. So we're going to go to our bubble application here, which is going to be a blank app. So if you have not used bubble before, I'd suggest just taking a quick look at one of our other bubble courses. Um, we're not going to do as much of an intro here since this is definitely an advanced course. So we want to start out with a blank bubble application and we're really going to be using only two tools from the outside to build this application. The first is bubble, of course, and the second is the Google Calendar API. The Google Calendar API can be accessed here, developers.google.com. And then as soon as you go there, you'll be able to see, okay, I want to build something. So I'm going to type in calendar and that should be the first thing that pops up. And that's how you get here. So the Google Calendar API is what we're going to build our app on top of because it is a very powerful API and will allow us to grab availability from anyone who uses Gmail, uh, which is overwhelmingly becoming the, the number one option um, in corporate America and personal, um, personal choice. So um, it's going to be a very easy way for us to integrate into other people's calendars. It's also going to be a challenge because to use Google's calendar API, we're going to have to log in through Google and then access calendar information. And because this is sensitive information, we're going to have to go through Google's authentication system. So we're going to build some cool things in the background for our application. So if we go back to our booking application in bubble, we see that we have a blank page here. And because we are building our application, with the back end first, we're not going to worry too much about our visual styles right now. What we're going to do just to get started in this lesson is we're going to go to the visual elements tab here. We're going to click on install more and just type in Cal until the full calendar plugin comes up. This is a official bubble plugin. Just make sure you have the right one here and then hit install. As soon as you do that, you can then take that and drag it out. And now we have a very basic calendar. So if you've never used this calendar plugin before, it can be a little bit intimidating. Look at all the different data sources here and the different ways that you can format this calendar to appear. 
And really what we're going to need to do is we're gonna to need to format this calendar a number of ways so that as a user, we can go on the page and figure out how to book in the easiest way possible. And then also as a backend user, how can I use it almost as a dashboard? How do I make sure all my events are synced up? And then how do I set preferences so that only certain days are available? Um, we're really gonna have to work through a lot of different edge cases. And an edge case, if you've never heard of this term, is referring to those specific user scenarios that might not be that common, but could sync your application before it really even gets started. And an example of that is, hey, let's say I launched this as an MVP, and I don't give those edge cases of weekend bookings a real serious thought. And all of a sudden my customers sign up and they have appointments on Saturday when they don't want appointments on Saturday. Um, you know, they all of a sudden they have events being booked at 2 a.m. because the time zones completely, you know, disregarded people that lived in Europe. So you have to really think through those edge cases when you're building a application with backend functionality that is then integrating with something as complex as a calendar on the front end. So with this calendar application here, we're going to want to do a few things in the next lesson. I'm gonna break it up this way because really we're going to need to dive into this API from the get-go so we can start getting data into our application. Because as you'll see with the calendar plugin, a calendar really only displays the dates until you have a good data source. And that data source, of course, is going to be the calendar and the calendar events from our user. Um, so we're gonna to need to pull that in and then we're going to need to sort that so that we can see what events um, are in there and then build that advanced functionality to sort through whether a user is free or busy. So this is where I'm gonna leave you for the first lesson. If you have a little bit of extra time, I'd recommend just hovering over one of the elements here to click on the reference tab because this will give you the full documentation for the full calendar and you'll be able to just go through and quickly see what all of these different options are because we're gonna be using it heavily starting in the next lesson.